Greetings, travelers, and welcome to The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, presented by Draco Breach. Last time, we defeated the Eastern Palace and got the Pegasus Shoes, allowing us to travel faster and break open stone, stone clusters of five small stones, that is. This time, we will be doing some errands before we actually go to the next palace, but before that... The footage for this episode got corrupted, so I'm recording again using my backtracking account, uh, or save file named Back. So you'll probably see his name pop up incorrectly during conversations. That is just part and parcel with losing footage. Go figure. But somehow episode 4 and 6, which were recorded at about the same time, are just fine. I thought I was going to get knocked into the water again. Anyway, after we get that particular item, the um, heart piece that is was hidden under the small rock formation, we continue down over this marble bridge and head over here, and we should actually be in a familiar spot because this is Link's house. Now, one nice thing to keep in mind about Link's house is that there will always be three pots in here with three hearts. So, this might be actually be a pretty good place to start the, um, to start up your file whenever you, you know, have to save and quit and come back, um, because you will not be at full health when you restart. But there are a couple of secrets over here. Number one, right in here another rock formation and this one gives us a fairy fountain to collect some fairies in case we need any bottled um, other than that this tree actually um, holds a secret and a lot of trees that are similar to this will also hold similar secrets and that secret being they drop something it i i'm pretty sure it's set based on the tree um but this one gives you a fairy. And it's not always something beneficial like a fairy. It can be harmful like a bee or a um, lit bomb. So you, you know, if, if, you're, if you're experimenting and finding out what all the trees do, um, I might show off several of the trees, but I'm not sure I'm actually gonna get all of them. Um, but you know, there is that. They will give you something for for um, running into them with Pegasus shoes. Now it's always trees that are kind of by themselves. And here, yet another fairy fountain. If you're reckless like me, <laughs> then the fairy fountains will be a boon. Out here, these little gremlins. Of course I missed. There we go. Once you knock them out. All right, take it, thief. They will give you something random. Uh, in this case, he gave me a fairy. He can give you pretty much any any amount of rupees from from you know one five or twenty. Um, he can give you you know some a bomb refill, arrow refill, magic refill, fairy. I don't. I'm pretty sure he can't give you... Oh, of course, I... I'm pretty sure he can't give you anything bad. So there's never any reason not to defeat him that way by taking the, gra taking the grass out from under him, because that is the best way to get the best possible reward. Let's head over here first, because I am guaranteed to... Oh, let's go ahead and get another one. And that's a large magic jar. So, you know, he can give you some pretty decent rewards. I don't think I needed a magic refill, but that would have done a pretty decent job. Anyway, first things first. If you want the treasure chest, you push the two on the side, the one in the middle, and you get the treasure chest. It does lock you out from going behind the treasure chest until you exit and go back in. Um, in which case, you do the opposite. You push the middle one first, and then you push one of the side ones. 
in here will be a fairy um, and two levers to pull. Anti-fairy, not a fairy. If you pull this one, it's a trap! Uh, wow, I was early on that. But it drops lit bombs. You want to pull this one. Because it will open the sluice gate over there. And leave us a bit of a nice surprise once we leave the area. We'll notice the small lake has been drained. And we get a piece of heart. Now, kind of interesting thing is if you pick up the, uh, these fish, one of these fish and carry it back to Kakariko Village, you can actually sell it to, this, to, the, um, to the man who's manning the, st the, the carpet stall in the middle of Kakariko, in the middle of Kakariko Village in the square, and he will give you 100 rupees for, that, for it. I don't need it, so... Let's see if I can get... Oh, there we go, 20 rupees. But yeah, so there is that. I'm gonna head over here first. Going over here now is optional. This guy doesn't do anything right now. Pay no attention to the average middle-aged man standing by the sign. Leave him alone. <laughs> so yeah. Kind of, uh, kind of hostile there. In here, again, a nice place to recover from any injuries you may have sustained. You'll see a lot of these. You really will. Um, having them hidden almost doesn't feel worth it right now. But anyway, this is the desert, and I said I wasn't going to the next palace yet, right? Well, there's a bit of dialogue out here that you can't get if you do what you're supposed to do first. So I want to, you know, I want to show off the dialogue, a little bit of the lore. So we come over here. I actually want bombs in a moment. I am Agana. I sense something is happening in the Golden Land, the Seven Wise Men Sealed. This must be an omen of the great cataclysm foretold by the people of Hylian blood. The prophecy says, the hero will stand in the desert holding the Book of Mudora. If you have the Book of Mudora, you can read the language of, of the Hylia people. You should be in the house of the books, house of books in the village. House of the books, yes. You must get it if you are the person who will be the hero. Um, I was actually expecting him to say the, the, the file name, the, the name of Link, but he didn't. Anyway, in here, that little... F from this side, it is a little hard to see, but you can see the cracks in the wall when you look at the wall. And if you come in here, you will actually get another piece of heart. That means that we have seven of eight pieces. We're almost... We've almost added a second heart to our life already. And that is always nice to have a little buffer, especially when, and I'm sure I'll say it again, you're as reckless as me. But anyway, we will leave him for now because there's nothing really that he can, nothing else that he can really give us. However, Take note of that. Can't do anything about it right now, but take note of it. That's one really nice thing about putting clues in the world about where you're going, you know, where you might want to go, what you might want to do. Zelda, The Legend of Zelda does a pretty decent job of that. Um, okay then, we'll just ignore that that happened. That was interesting. I wasn't even aiming for that. Um, not here, but there is a, there are a couple of places left to go out here. One is here, and this will give us another cave, and this is odd. What are all these strange looking enemies doing in here? But kind of the interesting thing is you can, you can cross this gap down here I have trouble crossing this gap up here, but there is a speedrunner's trick 
to be able to cross... Hello? To cross that gap pretty easily. And it involves the Pegasus shoes, which we have. I don't know if it's compatible with every version of A Link to the Past. Um, because most speedrunners actually will run the Japanese version for a multitude of reasons, and those usually involve glitches that aren't in the North American release. Anyway, in here, huh, what's this thief doing here? Take some rupees, but don't tell anyone I gave them to you. Keep it between us, okay? Gives you 300 rupees and, oh, that count. Hmm, awfully close to the rupee cap, ah, uh, cap. So, yeah, it's, whoa. There are lots of opportunities to get rupees in this game, and there are opportunities to use those rupees, so, you know, be on the lookout. I know um, that at some point we'll be spending a lot of rupees, like, at one time, so um, I'm always keeping that in mind. I'm always keeping in mind that I need 500 rupees for something. Oh, that would... I am always keeping in mind that I need 500 rupees for something, so I'm pretty hesitant to actually spend rupees. Um, frivolously, at least. But, like I said, there, there, there are plenty of opportunities to actually get rupees, so saving that, you know, being... Being extremely um, careful with your spending, not really necessary. It's it's useful for sure, but it's not really necessary. I, I kind of love as like, this is an empty room. This wall looks like it's cracked. It, the the weird things that they decide to hide. But anyway, another fairy fountain, another way of refilling life, and huh, there's another cave over here. But, if you go over here, there's actually nothing you can do. You can push on these blocks, and none of them will move. Not a single one. But you may have noticed, before I entered the first cave, from the outside, that there was something just over there. And in fact... One of you crabs, or one of you enemies, are one day going to demonstrate that I can harm you with bombs. But anyway, there was a cracked wall, and we can go in, and there's two rooms set up again, and we see, hmm, well this is kind of interesting, and we see an ice rod, which is actually kind of a neat thing to have. Um, and I'll, I'll show it off, you know, it's, it's, it's fun, it's, it's a nice little thing to have. When you use it, doesn't really damage enemies. It freezes them. And you can kind of you can use that to your advantage, especially with enemies that have more health. Using it on a crab is kind of pointless because besides being fast, there's nothing else to them. They only have one hit. Even with the weakest sword in the game, and wh why am I I am having fun with hitboxes, that's what I'm doing. Anyway, the fastest way to do to to backtrack is sometimes to save and quit and start at a different location. And in this case, you can start at either the uh, restart at either the sanctuary or Link's house to get to where we're going a little bit faster. But I want to take the scenic route. Sometimes it's not. I, okay. Sometimes it's nice to take the scenic route. Sometimes it's nice to see how many boulders you can dodge accident completely accidentally I how did These little gremlins can be annoying No, I didn't Well, it's not important. I am only on one of my backup files. But anyway, where we're heading... Hit two bushes at once, because of course I did. Where we're heading is back to Kakariko Village, because... 
Well, the old guy told us to get something, didn't he? So this tree has a bomb. This tree has a fairy. I actually remembered those two because I did hit them in my... Uh, when I originally recorded this episode. Um, so... Now there's that. I... The trees... The, the, the lone trees aren't terribly important. And that kind of looked interesting, didn't it? We'll explore that later. Um, I don't think there's anything hidden to do it earlier. Um, and I don't think... I don't think you lose out on anything, whether you do it now or do it later. Anyway, you, we remember this book from, I think it was episode two. And we grab it. You found the Book of Medora. You can use it to read the ancient language of the Hylia. And we're going to do that pretty soon. But first, let's go back to the old man and tell him that we found the book. Because that seems kind of important. Now, what's kind of interesting is, like, before you even get to the first dungeon, you have the chance to find four pieces of heart. But before getting to the second dungeon, I'll tell you this right now, you're not going to find a second piece of heart, uh, a second set of four pieces of heart before reaching the second dungeon. That just, it just isn't going to happen. It's unfortunate, but it is true. I will be showing off all the pieces of heart locations. I will be showing off, you know, I, I like doing this because it's so silly. You get a better reward from be beating him in, in, in an interesting way. You don't, you know, really? You're faster at shooting your bow than I thought you were. Anyway, um, they didn't have to program in those little gremlins having multiple ways of being defeated, but they did, and it's it's kind of interesting. It's a kind of like um, a risk reward. You know, you can you can chase them around and potentially get something good, or potentially get something that you know you don't need at the time. You know, the the reward could be you know twenty rupees or a fairy. Um, or you could get, uh, or, or a large magic jar, or you could get one rupee, um, or five, you know, it, it's, it is interesting. I, I do like, I do like the, the, the fact that you can defeat the gremlins in multiple ways and have kind of an interesting interaction. Anyway, this will be the last thing we do and we will show him that we have the book. You actually talk to him, you don't show him the book. Aha! It is the Book of Medora. With it, you can read the language of the Hylia people. And that's that's all he has to say. If you... This is out of the way. Like, completely out of the way. And you might miss this lore. And if you pick up the book before you talk to him, he won't give you that little bit of lore that you got when I came here before getting the Book of Medora. And that's, you know, that's kind of interesting. I like that. That is, that's, you know, the game's paying attention to, to I mean, yeah, it's, it's just a flag. It's just a state that they can set. But it's paying attention to what you do. And, you know, speeding things along if you already know what you're doing. Anyway, that will be it for today. So... For the time being, this will be Draco Breach reporting out. God bless and safe travels.